Welcome to the Mobile Workforce Podcast, where we sit down and have real conversations with business leaders that have been where you are. During these interviews, we'll dive into what it takes to improve systems and champion processes that maximize performance. Each week, our trailblazing guests share their experiences and understanding of the workforce to help inspire change, challenge our thinking, and share what it takes to successfully travel the road to profitability. Now here's our host, co-founder and chief evangelist of About Time and WorkMax, Mike Merrill. Hello again, and welcome back to the Mobile Workforce Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Merrill. And this week, we brought Mr. Brian Hodge back again. We had such a great conversation last week. We wanted to dig into the more practical application of some of the methods that he shares and preaches in his business and coaching and helping construction companies have better leadership and better communication. So let's jump into the episode. I think you guys will really love this one. Well, welcome back, Brian. You did such a good job last week. We we decided we had to have you back on to dig into the conversation further. Hey, I'll try to be helpful best I can. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, you did a great job and uh, we really just opened the top of the can uh, last week on something that I think is worth diving into a little bit deeper. And that is maybe a focus on this conversation around um, how managers can better engage with the employees that they're overseeing and, and try to help win every day. Yeah. Yeah. The way, the way I like to address it is like, you know, um, managers have this idea. They, they, they are aware that it's possible to have a, a crew and to have a hard worker that really cares about what they're doing, uh, that really gives a rip about the work that they're doing. And it's like, how do we how do we help managers, leaders, frontline leaders get more of that from their team? Um, last last week we talked about, you know, the manager has to care. And it's got to be really clear that the manager cares about their job, but more importantly, the manager cares about that employee as a human, as a as a as a person. Um, absolutely essential. If we have time later, I'll, I'll give you one of the best stories I got about leadership. I about people, but like the next thing is like that's table stakes. We like we're not people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care, right? I forget who said that. It's not my idea, but like they're not going to listen to goals, expectations, standards, that kind of thing until you've established you care about them as a human. So once we've got that, then we can move to Okay, let's be really clear about the expectations. And, you know, have you painted the picture clear enough for me where I can explain to somebody else what good enough looks like? Now, I can't tell you how often I hear the manager is frustrated. I've told him a thousand times and he still don't do it. And when they're describing the scenario to me, the manager's kind of setting it up like, the like the worker's an idiot like they're just not listening they don't get it whatever and i'm like that's actually not where my attention goes when i hear about that problem my eyes go right on the manager i'm like how can i be sure that you really actually have been clear that you've repeated yourself enough, that you've reinforced it enough you've made the the picture of good vivid enough um and usually i find that they have they think they've been <laughs> they think they've set the expectation and they have it. I mean, it starts at the highest level. I was just on the, uh, on the phone with um, you know, the, the top guy at one of the largest clients I have. And he was spitting mad because he had communicated something. And it had not gotten down from divisional through service manager down to the field managers. And the field managers were freaking out. They didn't know, like, why we weren't doing something. And I'm like, I had to call him up and I'm like, Man, I just need to let you know the field managers not so happy about this. I imagine like it didn't sound right to me because I know how you are. And he gets all mad. And um he was absolutely convinced. This top leader has absolutely convinced that he made himself abundantly clear to his direct reports. And so I talked to a few of his direct reports, and they were not clear. And so I mean, if it can happen at the highest levels, it's gonna happen at the lowest levels. And um, it, it, I, 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 I've heard Patrick Lencioni say employees need to hear something seven times before they start to think that senior leadership might be serious. And so it, our job as leaders, if you're not comfortable, you know, um, 
repeating yourself, I've got bad news. You know, it just means you're in, in for a world of pain. It's a central part of leadership to, you know, not only be clear, but be clear multiple times um, in, in setting expectations. Um, and then, you know, you got, so you got to care before you can clarify your expectations. And I need really clear expectations before we can have coaching conversations. Because at the end of the day, you know, you make things really clear for me. Now, all of a sudden, I've got a measuring stick to know whether or not I'm doing good enough. And when I'm not doing good enough, what do we do then? And so that's where we get into, you know, difficult conversations we talked a little bit about last time, but really coaching conversations. And the 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 key skill, if I could, if I could just drop, you know, anything to exercise more this afternoon, today, whatever, use good open-ended questions. Because the, the leader wants to be like, you know, you got to get your stuff together and this needs to be cleaned up and, you know, whatever. And it's like, time out. How can you use a good open-ended question to engage their brains differently? Because employees can be trained to be helpless, okay? If, if I'm the boss and I don't want you using your head and it's like, you're going to, you're going to do exactly what I tell you to do and how I tell you to do it, then the employee is going to get stuck. And rather than using their brain, they're just going to be like, I'm going to go ask boss what I should do. Boss going to tell me. And then I do what, and then if it doesn't work, it's boss's fault. It's not my fault. I didn't, I'm not taking any risk. And so that's, we're underutilizing our, our staff when you're not letting them use their brains. And so how do you get them to use their brains? Use questions. What kind of questions? Questions that start with what or how, and not why. I love that because because yeah, that they uh, they have to use their brain and it also show with feedback that they're paying attention and engaged and plugged in. And uh, we had a guest on here last year in Cody Rich, and he talked about the same book traction. And he and I have had a lot of side conversations since. And he's a big believer in the entrepreneurial operating system. And one thing he's done in his businesses to help employees plug in is he gives them an allowance of a monetary value of decisions that they can make. So when, if, if something costs a thousand dollars or less, he will let certain level managers make that decision and not have to go to him. And they still have to report it obviously has to be, you know, there's a conversation around it, but they're trusted with that level of financial decision. And he said, that is one of the, the single handed, greatest things that he's done to empower his employees to step up and start learning to make decisions that previous to that, he wasn't allowing them to make, which was just dragging him further into the trench and slowing down production. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Daniel Pink wrote a book called Drive and he said, you know, the good news is bad news. The, the bad news is we have these ideas that carrots and sticks are the way to lead people. Right. And, and the carrot is like, if I can just find the, the right little gift card to dangle in front of the employee to incent them, incentivize them to jump, or I got to find the right stick. You know, what am I, what am I going to whip them with? Like, you're going to lose your dumb, I'm going to dock your pay. You're going to lose PT, whatever. And he says, carrots and sticks don't work like sustainable. Like they're not, they don't work in the long term. They're not sustainable solutions. You can get somebody to move quickly for a short period of time with carrot or a stick, but it won't work for a while. So, if that doesn't work, what does? And he says, there's three things that motivate humans in general. And that is autonomy, mastery, and purpose. And that's where, you know, tying it back to EOS and engagement and what do we do as, as leaders? Like what, what that guy described is like autonomy is the ability for me to figure things out. So when you clarify, like I'm allowed to figure things out up to a thousand bucks and I have the, fr that's naturally engaging. That's going to fuel my ability. And you've made it really clear. Like when it comes to the budget, this is how much you've got to, to work with. That's going to naturally motivate human beings. Um, you know, mastery is I want to get better at, at, at skills on a day in day out base, basis. People, humans, at least semi-normal functioning humans actually want to do well and do better on a day in day out basis. And the last one, purpose is, um, you know, they, they want connected. They want their work to have an impact on the world that's bigger than just, 
you know, an hourly wage. Um, and so as leaders, my challenge to leaders is, are you explaining the why? You know what I mean? And I catch leaders out on this all the time. I'm like, all right, give me something that you're frustrated with your guys and they're not doing. And, and they'll say something like, you know, a, a, you know, they're not filling out their paperwork correctly. I'm like, cool. Why would I care about doing it? They're like, well, you got, you got to do that to be efficient. I was like, okay, avoiding inefficiency does not get me out of bed in the morning. There's got to be a bigger reason why, right? And so we workshop it. I'm like, tell me why. Well, you got to get your paperwork in. Why? Because that helps, you know, the the workflow go more smoothly. I was like, okay, go more smoothly. Then what happens? And they're like, well, if it goes more smoothly, then our invoices are more accurate. I'm like, great. Well, if our invoices are more accurate, then what happens? Well, if the invoices are more accurate, then we get paid quicker. I was like, oh, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So we're drawing a line from like this, I got to do my paperwork better to we're getting paid more quickly, but we're not done. What happens when we get paid more quickly? And they're like, well, when we get paid more qu quickly, the company does better overall year over year. I was like, then what happens? We get raises. Then what happens? Well, then we can go on vacations. At the end of the day, we got to be able to draw a line from whatever stupid little thing you want me to do all the way down to like happy families. And like a better world. And like, and if you can't draw that out sequentially, and this is why it's so important for the leaders, and this is something you can start doing today, is have those why conversations. And the easiest way to do it is like, you could tell me, but the more fun way is to use questions and ask me. So you get a two for one. Use your open-ended questions and, and engage somebody in the conversation and help explain this why. But like, Okay, let's take, and I, yeah, and it's so funny because like I get managers who are frustrated that their employees don't see the bigger picture. And I'm like, cool. When was that time, when was the last time you paid the bigger picture for them? And they're like, never. And so I was working with this uh, one company and they do um, basically agricultural equipment, sales and service all over the, the mid Atlantic and was talking to some of the shop managers and. And they were like, what were you frustrated by? They're like, um, you know, keeping the shop tidy. And I was like, cool. Why? And we, I, I just gotten done explaining like the importance of the why. Why is this so important? They're like, because it's more efficient. I was like, again, it doesn't get me out of bed in the morning. Help, help me connect the dots from like keeping this shop clean, keeping my truck clean, keeping the work site organized to happy families and a better environment. And, avoiding you know massive catastrophes in in the world you got to draw it out because here's the thing no employee goes home at night has a dream and 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 sees this vision and then comes back into work the next day and explains to all their coworkers, i finally figured it out why this work matters so much let me let me tell you why no employee comes to this conclusion on their own they need to be led there it's our job as frontline leaders to paint that picture and then to reinforce it over and over and over again. Track every dollar for each project with Foundation, America's number one construction accounting software. Follow the progress of your jobs and track expenses with construction billings, WIP reporting, construction payroll features, and accurate job cost reports. Build profits with precision. Get Foundation today. Wow, that is a... I mean, that's one of the most impactful statements I've heard. I mean, we've been doing this podcast almost four years. And I think the way you simplified that uh, really, really, I mean, it's very instructive on the, the purpose behind everything for each individual human. And so if you can map that out for them as individuals, then there is no need for a characteristic. I mean, we're like you said earlier, we're not horses, we're humans, right? I mean, you, you talk about autonomy, mastery, and purpose. Well, horses don't know anything about any of that stuff, right? They really aren't concerned with it. So um, I, I think that's fantastic and appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, and it's why, you know, it's why these things like EOS, it's not magic. You know what I mean? Gino didn't make up how humans work. He just built a system that helps use the way we naturally yeah. work. Yeah. yeah, so right in that VTO, is our purpose, mission, cause. 
where he wants you to put it on paper, like what is the ultimate impact of this company, of this group? And then for us as leaders to tie into the Gallup information about how vital is important that like I'm able to understand the purpose of the company and how it makes my job important. Uh, the Gallup question, the Q12 question is very interesting. If we look at the the way this is worded, and this is Gallup, right? Gallup, like they've got army of freaking PhD. Sure, sure, Gallup polls. And, you know, all yeah, the, all Gallup polls. Research. And so here's the question. The mission or purpose of my company makes me feel my job is important. The mission or purpose of my company makes me feel my job is important. So this is this is great. Like, because I can I can measure somebody's agreement level to this and it tells me a bunch of things. It tells me like how clear is that company mission or purpose? How clear has the company made that mission or purpose? relevant to the my job and how often are you reinforcing like yeah brian because you kept the job site really cl clean that helped us you know get the job done more effectively which helps us reach more people and we can make the world a better day for more clients and planet earth right right and, and just really key and our job's never done uh and the good news for leaders out there is it's not rocket science and the other good news is like it's all perishable. And so just because you did it last week doesn't mean you don't have to do it again this week. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, if you if we had a little more time, you could share a story, one of your best examples. What's that story? Let's let's hear it. Oh uh, yeah. Best lesson I learned about uh, leadership. It took it took several years for this thing to actually get through my thick head. But I was stuck in Dallas. It was about 20 years ago at an airport. We're waiting for the flight. There's a bunch of guys sitting around that are clearly military, uh, but they're dressed in civilian clothes. And, and so we're all kind of frustrated. And this one guy is on the phone with us, loved one. And he's like, you know, these Delta people, I could just take them apart. And I was like, you know, that was kind of nice. There's little kids. He didn't use the F-bomb. He was, you know, and then I got this chill down my spine. It was like, oh, he's talking actual dismemberment. That's the level that these guys are, are ticked off at. So. We finally get on the plane. I'm in the back of the bus. I got the window seat. There's the middle seat and then the, the aisle. And, you know, if you if you fly a lot, you kind of know the rule. He who gets the armrest first gets the armrest, right? Well, one of these military guys is ends up in the middle seat right next to me. And I'm like, you can have armrest. You can have my pretzels. And you have anything. Well, and I was like, uh, I was not going to be chatty Cathy with him, right? So I, I didn't say anything to him but I was watching what he was doing and he had this thick manual and it was, his name was Jerry with a G because it was written on there. And the title of the manual was suppressive fire techniques. And so he is just pouring over this stuff. He's got his highlighter out. He's making notes in the margins and that kind of thing. And, and so I'm just kind of watching him pour over this stuff. And then finally he said something to me and I was like, that's it. You broke the silence. Yep. I'm curious. I got questions. I'm going in. And so I got to ask him about his work and he was coming back from a uh, training exercise. He had been over to the Middle East twice. He was very proud of the fact he brought, uh, you know, his entire team back both times. And he was just pat. You could just get from this guy. He was passionate about killing bad guys and breaking their stuff. And he was good at his job. And, um, and so I was, uh, you know, I, I had some questions. So I was like, Hey man, you get to play with all these weapons and stuff and just kill bad guys and break their stuff from all sorts of distances. I was like, you know, tell me what's your favorite weapon. And he sat back and he thought about it and he was like the bayonet. <laughs> I was like, Oh, oh wow. <laughs> oh geez. Art <laughs> this guy gets to kill people from miles away and he likes the wet work. I was like, I love it. I love it. And so I, I got the courage to, to ask him one more question. I was like, Hey man, Listen, in business, we study leadership all the time, you know, and we got seminars and books and systems and acronyms and that kind of thing. You're living it, you know. Tell me, what, from your perspective, what's the most important thing about leadership? And he did the same thing. He sat back and he thought about it. And he goes, your people got to know that you really care about them as people. And I was just like, my head was exploded because at that moment, 20 years ago, 
I was frustrated. And I was rising up the, the corporate ladder, you know, and I was frustrated because I didn't have a lot of people that reported to me. And I was having to, to collaborate across a bunch of different departments and get people to give me stuff so I could get stuff done. And my worldview at that moment when I was sitting next to Jerry was like, if more people reported to me, then they would have to do what I told them to do. And then the world would literally be a better place. Like this is the answer to all the world's problems. I give orders, people do stuff, stuff gets done. Finally, we will get success. And so Jerry's idea that the most important thing is like those people that want to get stuff done, they need to know that I cared about them as a person was mind blowing to me. It took a while to set in, but like that is like the number one lesson I think for all of us as leaders. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. I, it popped into my head, just this epiphany. I mean, here's this guy, this tough guy that you would never want to face in a dark alley, or it sounds like even miles away, potentially, right? If you're on the wrong side of the line. But fascinating that his favorite position to be in, whether it's with a friend or a foe, is hand-to-hand. -hand. Close proximity, right there. There's no, there is no margin of error be, when you're that present because you, I mean, you're right. One mistake can be fatal. Or again, you can reach out and hug somebody if that's what they need because you're in that type of proximity. So what a great lesson, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he had all the command and control structures in the world. And, and, um, and so for someone in his position to like have that as a priority, it really had an impact on me. And then, you know, I, to tie it right back to, you know, to EOS and to employee engagement, what can the leader do? You know, the the Q12 survey that measures employee engagement, the Gallup instrument, has that that question that we talked about a little bit last time that my manager or someone at work seems to care about me as a person. Just just seems to care about me. But when an employee can strongly agree, Gallup's measured just the impact of agreeing with that one statement. They're significantly more likely to stay. We hear about turnover and losing people, right? Well, you want to keep your people, demonstrate you care about them as a person. But this one is, is you know, they're more productive, they're more profitable, but there's this one thing that Gallup's measured. When I can agree with the statement, my supervisor or somebody cares about me as a person, my customers are more engaged. And you think about that for a second. They've measured it. My customers are more engaged. That means when somebody, when I agree that somebody cares about me as a person, it shows up so much in my work that my customers buy more stuff, give me better reviews, pay their bills on time, refer more people. My customers are more engaged when I can agree with that statement. And again, it, it makes our job as leaders simple. Maybe not easy, but it's not complicated of what we've got to do. And my challenge to everybody is like, how much would your folks agree with the statement? My manager, or somebody at the company seems to care about me as a person. Number one. Number two, what's something you can do today to demonstrate that you care? Well, walk out there, chat with them, act interested. If you're looking for better asset management, then you need WorkMax Assets. WorkMax Assets keeps your data stored in a central location. So as your team allocates equipment, tools, and resources, the rest of the crew is aware. Monitoring ROI has never been easier. Get WorkMax assets now. Well, and in, 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 in acting, sometimes, again, maybe you're not, you know, I, I don't, maybe botany is not my thing, but it doesn't mean I can't take interest in somebody else's interest if they're into, you know, raising plants. I mean, it's not, it's about the person and their passion and, and why it's important to them. And I think if you can connect on that level, then when it comes time for work stuff, you have a platform of a relationship, you have a communication pattern, you have a connection with that individual where you can say, Hey, you know, it would be really awesome if we could, you know, be a little more thoughtful when the customer calls in, you know, with a problem, let's, let's try and have just a little bit more empathy with them and see if we can help them solve the root of their problem a little quicker. And with a little bit more kindness and empathy and, and, uh, and all of a sudden, you know, that, that support manager or whoever it is may, may have more interest and care and concern for that client, which again, back to your analogy of, 
okay, well, I always use, I always say, so what? And it's not, so what? I don't care. It's like, okay, I did this. So, so now what? Like, okay, so what? So what's next? So this equals what equals what equals what equals what? And when that road, just like you mentioned, uh, leads to the place where you've got a, a happy family at home or a better home life, or you, you feel more complete and fulfilled as a person, all of a sudden I've found the secret to unlocking the thing that most people in the history of the world haven't been able to do a great job solving. Yeah. Yeah. They got to know it matters. And the good news is, is it does. The, I mean, the good news is I haven't, I haven't found any company with a job that it, we're asking a worker to do anything worthwhile that doesn't somehow connect to a happy families and a better, brighter world safer environment, all sorts of, of good stuff. It's, and, and I think, you know, just to go real broad brush on this, you know, when you look at the trends and this is impacting the, the, the trades and construction hugely, but you see how men, young men are dropping out of the workforce. What can we do about it? This is an answer to that. Okay. This is like something every leader can do today is explain the why. Because when you can connect the why, I mean, I don't want to go too goofy into like the science behind it, but you can actually start to rewire people's brains and how they get their dopamine fix. And if you can inspire some of that hope, that's our job as leaders is to inspire that hope. And if we get better at that, then we can actually do something to counteract the men in the United States who are dropping out of the workforce at a pretty scary rate. I think, you know, as humans, we all have that, like you mentioned, I mean, it's, it's that, that internal compass that, that is hopefully leading us to where we want to get to in this experience of life. And we know that, you know, our emotions and, and other parts of our brain are so much more advanced than, you know, those mammals or animals in the animal kingdom. And, um, you know, we, we talk about our um, instincts or a natural reaction or whatever that is. Humans are just driven differently. I mean, they're they're seeking a higher purpose, you know, a greater good, a greater goal. And uh, and I think, you know, I, I, when you talk about military soldiers and some of what they sacrifice, you know, literally even the ultimate sacrifice for people that they'll, they'll never know, they've never met. That's not something that animals do. They're not driven or wired to be able to do that. So if you could connect with humans on that level where they the, the mission at purpose is greater than their own smaller, more immediate goals, I think I think that's when the magic can happen. And uh, and when it, when it's all aligned with that end goal of everybody being more happy in their own home, then everybody wins. So I think it's fantastic that you found a method and a and an approach to help train people and, and open their vision to be able to achieve this type of a, a goal, even in the workplace, even when they're, you know, banging boards and swinging hammers and, you know, cutting metal, whatever it is they're doing in construction, slinging concrete. Uh, I think it's fantastic. And, and it's probably one of the traits that might need it the most because, again, we're tapped into that primal adrenaline of, you know, building stuff and breaking stuff and, more blue collar, right? More physical versus the mental and emotional side of, of our human existence, right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. And and it's, I, I'll tell you, I love the work I get to do. Um, it's, it's not easy. Um, and I, I don't even advertise it well because like I talk about leadership development and I talk about EOS stuff, but the feedback I get is when we do these things well, the comments I get is like, you're helping me be a better person. I'm, I'm becoming something different than I was yesterday. And it, and that like, that's, that's what we're really after because being a better leader means being a better person. And that sounds like, Whoa, that's out of Brown. It's not allowed to say I'm not a good person. Like, well, hold on. If you want to be a better leader, it's going to require becoming a better person. And if you want to be a better leader, you're going to need to be a better listener. If you want to be a better leader, you're going to have to be better about managing your own emotions, let alone helping other people manage their emotions. And that's going to require some character development on your part. And it's going to require more patience. It's going to require 
better a better decision making process. All of those things mean being a better be, be, becoming a better person. I think I think most uh, most thoughtful people would agree that leading by example. Um, as one who is doing actively and is continuing in the same path, I'm asking you to walk. I'm blazing the trail. I'm cutting the path. I'm leading the way. I'm shining the light uh, that, that we're all going to, you know, work towards here together. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's you don't have to sell anybody on that when you lead by example. They they could just follow you. And you're you're showing them. You're eating that dog food yourself, right? Yeah, best leaders I've seen are the. Are the ones that actually realize they can get better and and change and grow. There's too many leaders out there. They find their sweet spot. They're like, yeah, this is this is my little technique. It works for me. Yeah, there's some downsides, but the upsides are worth it. So, and they never change. And it's kind of sad. Uh, but yeah, to your point, it's resting on laurels, right? It's resting yeah. on laurels, which is like you said, every day you got to go back and do it again, right? It, it's uh, it, it expires. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It's perishable. Well, uh, this has been another great conversation. So fun. Uh, I, I feel like we probably only scratched the surface of, of your top bullet points probably at this point, but hopefully it's encouraged folks to reach out to you and and maybe learn more about uh, what, you're, what you're sharing with the community and with society. What? How's the best way they can find you and get more of this goodness? Yeah, I mean, not uh, my LinkedIn profile is my uh, webpage. It's a, it's a good way to to sample to see stuff that I'm 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 pitching. There's I try to make, you know, lots of content that people can use right away. And then if they want a, a, a deeper conversation about how to use EOS, how to how to you know how to en- enact some change with their leadership team, I'm happy to hop on a Zoom call, on a phone call, or or get together. Uh, face-to-face and talk more. That's awesome, Brian. Well, I guess as parting words, what's the last statement you would say uh, capping off these two episodes and conversations we've had? Yeah. um, Can't emphasize it enough. Make sure your folks know that you care about them. Make your your expectations really clear and repeat them often. And then use good open-ended questions. You do those three things, you're going to level up your leadership. Love that. Great. Well, thanks again. Really appreciate it. I appreciate the friendship and, and I, I hope we have an opportunity to connect again down the road and, and uh, learn more from each other. So thank you. I would love that. Thanks. Thank you for joining us today on the Mobile Workforce Podcast, sponsored by About Time Technologies and WorkMax. If you liked the conversation we had today or were able to learn anything new or helpful, please make sure to follow us on our WorkMax page on LinkedIn and on Instagram at workmax underscore. And subscribe to the show on iTunes or your preferred podcast platform so you will never miss another insightful episode. Also, if you enjoyed the podcast, please leave us a five-star rating and review and share the show with your friends and colleagues. Your support means the world to us and will allow us to continue providing impactful information with others looking to improve their results in their business and in turn, their life.